Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, just want to say we're really excited to play in the Bad Boy Mowers Pinstripe Bowl. Really excited about our opponent, Syracuse. A lot of respect for Dino Babers and his football team. Just want to thank uh, Randy Levine, uh, Mark Holtzman, uh, Bad Boy Mowers, uh, the New York Yankees. And we look forward to heading out to New York City, one of the best places to spend your holiday season. I mean, it truly is a destination for people um, uh, to experience the holiday season, and, you know, we'll be doing the same thing. So we're really looking forward to it. Our guys are really fired up about it. We let them know, um, especially the guys that are from the Northeast. They're really excited. Um, and it's uh, one of the most historic venues. And um, I, I've been there before. I think it's one of the best bowl experiences for student athletes that you could poss possibly have. When you pull all of our players, too, how many of you actually been to New York City? I mean, 5% have raised their hand. Uh, so you're talking about one of the best times to be in New York City, but also uh, for a bowl experience as well. So we're very honored, very excited, and uh, can't wait. So with that, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Have you been to the bowl game? Or just... Played in it, yeah. Well, I, I didn't play in it. I should say that. Coached in it, right? Uh, when I was at Rutgers, we actually played the fighting Garrett Chernoffs uh, over there at the, uh, for the Iowa State Cyclones. Yeah. So, and I, when I was there, and he even tell you, before, um, you know, we talk about bowls all the time, right? Bowl experiences. And I was telling him, I said, one of my top three favorite bowl experiences was the one in New York. Because it's so different than most bowl experiences. Uh, some just show you, hey, here's the beach. Have a good time. See you in five days. Um, this is something that's really, really in-depth. Um, the culture and the excitement and, and Times Square and being in Manhattan and, it, I mean, it really is. I mean, I grew up on Home Alone and Home Alone 2 and um, Macaulay Culkin. So it, it's really special. And hopefully our players uh, are going to have a – I know they're going to have a great time. And hopefully they truly realize that. When did Tyler Newby tell you that he was going to come back? What was your reaction? Which time? Uh, you know, Tyler is <laughs> – he was telling me this like at week two. He's like, hey, man, next year we're going to do this, this, this. Like week two. Like, what are you – are you coming back? He's like, well, I don't know yet. But next year, you know, he would just say things here and there. And then there would be times like, you know – I don't know, coach. I don't know. I might might come out, you know. But he's he's a he wears his emotions on his sleeve. Um, but you know, this was a decision that took a long time to get to. He took some time away, uh, not from the team. He just took time away to really kind of block it all out, make his decision, talk to his parents. Uh, he's got two amazing parents, and uh, that are very supportive. And he made the decision he made. We support him obviously 100. percent You know, when when a guy tells you that you're coming back, I mean, you're really excited because of the team, but. A guy, guys have also told me they're not coming back, and I'm just as excited because this is about their experience. This is about their life. They've got to be able to, as long as they take the time to make the decision uh, and spend a lot of time on it and do it for all the right reasons, whatever they feel those right reasons are, I'll support them 100%. It's reactionary decisions based on just some of what somebody told them. Um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily a big fan of unless they're real facts, and our guys have done a great job of that. You know, there's always going to be guys that stay. There's going to be guys that go. Um, but I just make sure that they have all the information in front of them, can make the best decision they can with their families, and uh, this was the best decision for the Newbins, and I'm really excited about it. Will Tyler be able to play in the bowl game? Uh, yes, he, he will be available. Yep. Tyler, there's other news in KC with Michael Dixon, and hey, he's going to enter the portal. What can you share about his decision? Well, I don't talk about anybody not, you know, that's not with the team anymore, but I will say this. I mean, the portal, it's, it, this is every team in the country is going through this right now. Um, you know, you look at Newbins' announcement, Right, and when that announcement happens, think back to last year, Muhammad announced, and then you know two running backs left. It's just part of college football these days, you know. And I think that's what fans in college football, not just Minnesota, but fans in college football, especially here in Minnesota, need to just wrap our heads around a little bit that the game has changed, recruiting's changed, transferring's changed. Transfer used to be like, oh man, what's wrong? That that just happens, um, you know. A guy you know gets told something else and wants to go somewhere else because the guys in front of him. Uh, I get that, and that's why there's a transfer portal. We've benefited off the transfer portal. You know, you got guys that have made a ton of plays for us this year uh, that were from the transfer portal that, um, thank goodness, we have the transfer portal. So you got to look at it, uh, you know, half full, which we always do. Uh, we know that there's going to be that type of attrition for all the right reasons, and I wish him all the best. He's a tremendous person, a wonderful player, and uh, these are tough decisions young people have to make. What is it, the first view of, of Syracuse? I know they're really yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, but we've we planned, you know, we know information. We don't know exactly where we're going, but there's two or three uh, bowl games that they know we're probably going to be slotted in. Um, you know those opponents. So if you think back a week and a half, you know, ago, I mean, I gave our team, our, our coaches, I gave them eight teams, 
as you go on the road, here's eight teams. And so we downloaded them all on their computers. As the week went on, I was able to, you know, tell them, hey, focus on these two teams. And then um, we were able to get to Syracuse. So um, really good opponent. Uh, did really well in the ACC this year. And, uh, you know, won some, won some big games. So. You coached against Coach Babers when he was at the Bowling Green? I did, yep. I mean, I don't know if there's a ton of comparisons. We're at two different places. It's different years. Uh, I do know this. I got a ton of respect for Dino. Know him very well. Um, you know, two Mark Coyle hires, you know, when you look at it, it's pretty cool. Uh, but he's a wonderful football coach. I mean, he's won everywhere he's been. Um, and when you look at the style of offense they play, I think this year they've been able to adapt to a lot of different things. I mean, everybody just thinks that it's orange fast or, you know, whatever. when he was at Bowling Green, it was Falcon fast. And um, But as they've evolved, they've, they've made it even more um, dangerous to go against of how they've been able to implement with a, a really strong running game into what they've been able to do. So got a ton of respect for Dino, know him well, and um, I know he'll have his team prepared, and it'll be a great bowl game. With 17 days till signing day, are there any positions you're hoping to address here that you haven't already? All of them. <laughs> there, it, it's, and I mean that not to be sarcastic. I truly mean that. I mean, I have no idea in the next 17 days what's going to happen. Um, even news today, it's just like, oh, okay, all right, moving on. You know, it, it, it's, it's part of that world. The, the control aspect of being a head football coach, of knowing, you know, I always used to tell you, I'm always two years out. I'm constantly two years out, two years out. You can still be two years out, but you better work in now. Uh, you better be working in month increments than just two years out. And you could backtrack that way, but what your roster looks like today, it, it might not look anywhere near that in two years. Uh, but we're going to look at every position uh, we have, whether it's the portal or high school uh, commitments. And I feel like we have a really strong high school class. I feel really good about where we're at in the high school developmental part. And then, then we just have to fill in some pieces here and there with the portal as we keep going through the next however many days. What's the challenge there with the portal, with the signing day coming and the whole? It's all a great question. I think just the challenge is the unknown, right? It's just the unknown. It's that control piece uh, is you just don't know what you're going to have to go after. Last year, after Mo said he was coming back, and we had two guys leave that were really the depth and the future of the running back position, and they just picked up and left. Uh, so they were, okay, well, now what, right? Um, but – when you start to see what we're doing with, with the portal and the high school development, I think then the development of our program in general, I think you can take a deep breath and say, okay, we're going to be in a really good position either way. And uh, our brand of the University of Minnesota and what we've been able to do on the recruiting trail and, and uh, the last few seasons, last three in a row, have really, really good success. Um, you start to, you know, attract a lot more people. So it's been, uh, it's been really exciting. The bowl prep in, in there too, is that, that the, was the Oh, you're talking about just the schedule? Yeah, the schedule. Sorry. Didn't even answer your question. Um, yeah, the challenging part, which it, it's the exciting part. I wouldn't even say it's challenging. It's more exciting because we just go, go, go. People always say, what are you doing offseason? <laughs> oh, the offseason is, is even busier than in-season, you know. Uh, we just spent a whole week on the road. Uh, but I think you got the, you've got the, the transfer portal, which every day there's hundreds of kids that enter that you didn't even have the day before. So you're altering where you go, are going in recruiting. You could have a day set in recruiting. And I'm going to three spots, and then boom, on the way to the second spot, we're going to make a diversion, and we're going to go here to see this kid who just hit the portal. You've got the recruiting piece of the high school plus the portal part. You've got the bowl prep back here. You've got your players back here finishing up with finals. Um, and then you're, you're doing everything you can to mix in some donors in there as well um, and getting practice time in there. You know, I think, that's, I think that's the exciting part of it, but the challenging part at the same time. You have OVs on the weekends. So we're, busy is an understatement. But that's what we do as coaches, just kind of our life. One or two more for Coach. We look back at the Wisconsin game, the run pass balance you guys had. How much of that was kind of preordained in the game plan? How much of that was game flow? Yeah, I, I think when you look at us, that, that's, I mean, we want to be balanced. We threw for over 300 yards. But there's been plenty of games. You look back to the Michigan State game. That's really us. I mean, you can go back through every season and you know, see eight of the games are really us. The games that we don't win, I mean, that's why people try to take you out of their, your own game plan. They want to make you one-dimensional. They want to do, take you away from what you do really well and make you just one-sided. I mean, that's, that's what hopefully we do to people. That's what people are trying to do to us. That's how you go win football games. But uh, I think everybody got a chance to see, you know, just Ethan's uh, ability. I mean, we see it all along. I mean, I, from day one, I've told you how good he has a possibility of being. Uh, but that, that's not the end-all, be-all either. Um, you know, they did a really good job of stopping the run and taking, making us one-dimensional. But I thought our receivers really stepped up. I thought our quarterback played really well. Our tight end played really well. 
And again, we were a little bit more by committee. And that's what we're going to have to be. I said that after Michigan State. And then we had some inconsistency with that committee. But if we can be consistent, that's what we're capable of doing. It's just now closing the gap to consistency. I, I, said, you, I think you might have asked me what are we missing when we were kind of going through that slide. I just said consistency, routine consistency. When we have it, we're pretty good. And if we can get back to those things like you saw against Wisconsin, uh, even when the run game wasn't as efficient as possible, we were still able to run the football through throwing it and spreading it around and making the routine plays and doing them consistently. Final one for Coach Allen. Is uh, Skinner going to get back on the practice field? Yeah, he's been on the practice field. Yeah, he's been, he's been at practice, and uh, no, he, I'll, I'll just say this because you know he deserves this. I mean, that's you know he'll be he'll he's, he'll be practicing today uh, as he comes back. Uh, he's still under the medical care, but he's back to practicing at um, different levels. But that doesn't necessarily just mean that um, you know that that one guy's won the job or not or anything like that. This is um, you know we're just worried about his health right now and doing everything we can to make him. Uh, Available. Thank you, everyone. Thank okay. you, Coach. Yeah, Rollerboats guy, Magu Gophers. Thanks, everybody.